Hello, welcome to the latest video on the Pinken YouTube channel coming to you in the wake of Dean Smith being appointed Norwich City's new head coach. And joining us, as you can see, is Damien Dugdale from the Villablog.co.uk, which has been running since 2004. Damien, how are you doing? And I suppose the first question really should be, what was your reaction to, to Villa deciding to, to sack Dean Smith last Sunday? Hi, Dave. Uh, nice to be here. Thank you very much. Uh, I've got to tell you, I'm still shocked at uh, the sacking of Dean Smith on a personal level. Uh, we hired him to do a job. His win rate from Brentford to the win rate at Villa is essentially identical. He's doing exactly what we hired him to do. Uh, he took us up from the Championship into the Premier League. And he's not been given, a, I don't think, personally, he wasn't given enough time uh, this season. I think he could have at least had November, December. Uh, there'll be a lot of people that disagree with that but it's not often you get a chance to have somebody like Dean Smith managing your team uh, and we've, we've thrown that away. Gutted is uh, is the word that uh, I still feel about Dean Smith going although very excited I've got to tell you about Stephen Gerrard. Yeah I, I was going to come back to that I suppose with the way things worked out well as we understand it as soon as Villa made their move and Smith was available Stuart Webber's uh, light bulb switched on and he decided that was that was pretty much going to be his man but to bring Gerard in do, do you see that as an upgrade that you, you see that as an exciting appointment someone who is very much heading towards the top of the game uh, I think from uh, a box office perspective I think from uh, uh, what Stephen, repre Stephen Gerard represents from a footballing perspective it's going to be seen as an upgrade uh, I think uh, meant in the nicest possible way Dave you or I could go and manage Celtic or Rangers and it's a very good time <laughs> Uh, Stephen Gerrard, he won one out of nine trophies uh, mm. his time up there. Now, don't get me wrong. It's still, you know, a successful record. Um, is he an upgrade on Dean Smith? I don't know. I think um, uh, time will tell. I think there's a degree of experience required in this league. Um, and I think Mr. Smith has shown that. He's demonstrated that. Uh, Stephen Gerrard, of course, from a Premier League perspective, he's got more experienced than any of us combined, but management is a, a, a different kettle of fish. Time will tell. I suppose it's a bit like Lampard, who obviously has been sort of in this mix in the last week as well, isn't it? Whether that being that legend status can can buy you the credit that you need with players in the Premier League. To focus on Smith's exit then, five consecutive defeats, what do you think the sort of um, main issues were there? Because when you won that game at Old Trafford not that long ago, things were all looking pretty rosy, weren't they? You'd had a good start to the season. I think you were ninth. But obviously John Terry went in the summer, Richard O'Kelly, clearly the, the sale of Jack Grealish. So what do you think sort of went wrong at the start of this season? I think at the, the start of the season was good for us. Um, I think uh, the last couple of months it's been... Uh, there's been some injuries. There's, there's been players, a number of new players coming into the into the team that need time. You can't expect players uh, this day and age to hit the ground running after five or six games. They need to have three or four, five, six months. Sometimes a player needs a season. We've seen it too many times to yeah. dismiss a manager after five five defeats. Um, it's you know it's just a, a a tough run, which I I'm convinced or, or I was convinced we would have got through. Um, it happens in football. But in this day and age as well, five straight defeats. Uh, and if you've got an eye on the next manager and the next manager has already indicated he wants to make a move, then sometimes it's just easier to pull the trigger. I think that's what we've done. OK, well, I, I mentioned G uh, Grealish there, obviously uh, sort of a, a Villa icon, I suppose you could des describe him as. I think Todd Cantwell particularly is going to have his eyes on on what this could mean for him. He'd fallen out of favour under Daniel Farker, it seems, and he hasn't been involved in, in recent weeks. Talk to us a little bit about the impact that, that Smith had on Grealish, because it, it didn't he make him captain. And, and, and really, when Smith arrived at the club, Jack had sort of fallen off a little bit, hadn't he? Yeah, Um I wouldn't say fallen off. I think uh, our previous manager uh, had taken Grealish as far as he could. I think Smith recognised in Grealish that we had uh, a player that had supported the club since, you know, was at the club since I think six years old. He was Villa through and through. He sounded like he was Villa. It, it was the easy decision, making captain and, and making the, 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 the focal point of the team. He's head and shoulders the best player we've seen in a Villa shirt in a generation. Um, Again, gutted that he left in the summer, but you know you you also can't you can't deny Jack the opportunity to play at the, at the top level. Uh, I think when when Dean Smith got got sacked, 
Jack actually referred to Smith as uh, the goat. On yeah. <laughs> which I think is quite nice. I think it's a nice touch. But I think also Jack said something similar when Bruce left. So, you know, you've got to take this stuff with a pinch of salt. Um, but yeah, uh, Jack going was sad. Uh, Dean Smith, though, is very good at, at giving the confidence to younger players and, and uh, making them play to their full potential. Hopefully he does that at Norwich. Yeah, it would be interesting with Campbell as well, because he, like Jack, he's a local boy, grew up supporting Norwich and things like that. I think there's a very similar player there, potentially. When Todd was on loan in Holland when he was younger, he actually played more of a, a central midfielder than, than a 10. So I think there are some similarities there, but whether he could get to the levels of, of Grealish, I'm not sure. So let's look back on that first season and the impact. I mean, here at Norwich, we know from the impact Alex Neal made when he came in in the January of 2015 and then led, led Norwich to the playoff final. That, that first season, given that he's a boyhood fan and, and all, all the connections he's got to the club, that must have been very special for you all. Uh, it was fantastic. Uh, first season, um, uh, it couldn't have got better. I think, I mean, obviously we were in the championship. Uh, uh, it's, it's, it's not the Premier League, but we were winning more games than we'd won, you know, again, almost essentially in a generation. We were winning consistently week in, week out. We were scoring more goals from the other side than, than the other side. And I think as fans... That's what we like to see. We like to see the team winning. Uh, it's not been nice uh, this season so far. You could, you know, you could argue, but I was convinced we would do better this season than we did last season. Last season wasn't great because we weren't winning as many, but you know, we managed to stay in the league, uh, and, and, and that I believe was, you know, the mission at the start of the season. Let's stay there and let's kick on this season. So, first season, awesome, and Dean Smith, I'm sure, will bring that belief and op optimism to your side this year as well. Okay. Hopefully, hopefully he gets to keep you up. That would be lovely to see. Well, it's, a, it's a big job, whoever stepped in, I think, whether it's Lampard, Smith, um, whoever was linked with it. I think when, when a team's got five points after 11 games, you've always got a big job on your hands. So I guess the way I almost look at it is that if a top championship club were looking for to bring a coach in at the moment who could take them to promotion, they'd be looking at Daniel Farker or, or Dean Smith as sort of their top candidates, wouldn't they? So uh, we'll, we'll see whether he has that whether he can have that impact. Um, last season seemed like it was a bit up and down as well, because I, I think, didn't you lose to Sheffield United, but you beat Chelsea and Arsenal and you had some good results along the way as well. Yeah, I think um, it was, yeah, up and down is a good way to describe it. Um, I don't remember the specific results, but um, uh, I think there was, there was a big learning curve for Dean Smith and many of the players. And I think uh, uh, it, it was helped with the likes of, John Terry supporting the team and, and there was some older heads in the side. Um, but it, it was a big, big learning curve last year. And um, uh, I think we were going to kick on this year again. Um, we would have done better this season than last. Uh, but yeah, we, we, we settled in. We did, I say we, the team and manager, they did what they had to do last season. Uh, and I, I, you, There's nothing more you can ask of them. OK, well, I've got to ask you about Emmy Buendia as well. Um, le left Norwich after a, an exceptional season. He was so good in the championship. Obviously, we've got to make that point. He was by far and away the player of the season. And obviously, there was a lot of sadness among the Norwich fans that, that he left. What have you made of him so far? And why do, why do you think it maybe hasn't quite clicked for him? Uh, time. Dave, I think going back to what I said a few minutes ago, you can't expect players coming from a, a different league, a different uh, system, to just hit the ground running. If you look at Jack Grealish, most expensive British player of all time, or English player of all time, he's not firing all cylinders at, all, all cylinders at City. He's, he's looking bang average at the moment. But when Dia, give him a little bit more time. The, the, the last match we played, there were, there were moments in that match where you, you, you actually saw why we paid the money we did. There were moments... And it's just time. Give him another three, five, six games, and we're going to start to see that on a much more regular basis. And with the likes of Gerard now, hopefully inspiring him to play a more attacking role. I think, I think he's going to be fantastic for us this season. I really do. And, and thank you very much for thirty million. I think was it? We, would have, we should have paid double. <laughs> yeah, I think thirty-three million up front, and a bit more to follow potentially. Um, I mean, yes, yeah, Stephen Gerrard. You couldn't ask for much better, other than maybe Lampard, sort of attacking midfielders or goal-scoring midfielders to learn from, could you? That's uh, that's not bad as a player. Um, well, just to close, then, if I frame it like this, um, Dean Smith's sort of positives. What what are the what are his key strengths? You probably hinted at it a little bit earlier. Um, in terms of what you said about it, sort of his motivation and stuff, but what do you see as the key sort of positives and strengths that he will bring? 
Um, I think with Dean Smith, he's going to he's going to solidify. He's going to create a a team with the players that you've got. He's going to very quickly identify those. If you've got any players, I, I don't know that are maybe causing problems. They'll be pushed out. He's he's going to create this feeling of uh, a team, and he's he's going to get you playing in a certain way that gets the best out of that team. It might not be how you think that team should be playing based upon your knowledge of the players and, and, and how they how they fit together. But he's going to identify what he thinks is best and he's going to give it 100%. And he will learn. We, we, we've seen that when things haven't worked out, when he's given it a proper go, he's changed stuff. He was going to do that this season. He's been playing three at the back. And we know that he was going to revert back to four at some stage in the very near future because it just wasn't working out for us. But he believed it was the right way to approach this season and he was giving it a go. He'll do that with, with Norwich and um, if it doesn't work out, he'll change. He'll adapt. Dean Smith will adapt and you'll see that in, in how he approaches the players and the team over time. That's interesting. There's a bit of a similarity to Farka there in that sort of switch to a three, but everyone knew he was going to get back to the four eventually because oh. it was his instinct. Yeah. Um OK, and I've got to sort of spin that the other way as well in terms of balance and um, sort of the negatives, the things that maybe frustrated Villa fans about Smith, because obviously when an appointment comes in, there's a lot of optimism and excitement about what might happen. But we kind of have to stay grounded as well, don't we, in that there are always frustrations about a manager and coach as well. Yeah, um, I think the frustrations are, they will rise to the top because he will have this belief in what he's decided on and it, He's, he's always the last to make changes. You, you will know this three, four weeks before the changes happen. The supporters will be talking about it. Right. Even, even in the match, he'll be very, very late to make the changes in the, in the game uh, that you'll be hoping for. But this might all change as well. Uh, you know, Based upon the, the, the set of plays that he's got and the system that he, he sets up for at Norwich, it might change. But mm. there was always this, he should have made the changes 10 minutes earlier in the match and he should have made the changes three or four weeks earlier. The beauty of it is, though, he does get there. Given given the time, I'm convinced Dean Smith will be great for Norwich. Great stuff. Well, that seems like a very good very good place to end. Thank you very much for your time, Damien, and, and best of luck for for the rest of the season. And I think I think I can speak for most Norwich fans that say they hope Emmy does kick on because we all know what an exciting player he can be. Fingers crossed. Thanks, Dave. Thank you very much. Thank you all very much for watching. And of course, Pinkin.com is the place to go for all the latest. <laughs>